Hey guys, this Sunday we'll begin our reading of Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels, also known as Travels into Several Remote Nations of the World in Four Parts. In this episode, I will share some information about those four different parts, the different peoples and nations that Gulliver visits, and then I'll end with some of the main themes included in the book. Now, I hope that by watching this introduction and learning more about this classic piece of literature from the 1700s, you'll be even more keen and interested to join us for the first live reading on Sunday at 8 p.m. One thing I will say right from the start is that it's far deeper than some of the abridged children's versions you may have read or the Hollywood adaptations you might have seen. There's a lot more to the original text than Gulliver and Lilliput. So let's go. Gulliver's Travels is a satirical novel by Jonathan Swift, first published in 1726, so nearly 300 years old, and the book follows the adventures of Lemuel Gulliver, a ship surgeon who, after being shipwrecked, finds himself in a series of strange and exotic lands. In the first part of the book, Gulliver is shipwrecked on the island of Lilliput, which is inhabited by tiny people who are only a few inches tall. Due to his normal human size, Gulliver is giant in Lilliput and is initially seen as a threat by the Lilliputians. However, he is eventually able to prove his goodwill and is accepted by the people, becoming a trusted advisor to the king and queen. Overall, Gulliver's journey to Lilliput serves to introduce him to the strange and exotic world of the tiny people, as well as to provide commentary on the petty and territorial nature of human society. In the second part, Gulliver travels to Brobdignag, a land of giants where he is tiny. He is treated as a curiosity and a pet, and he observes the culture and customs of the giants. Gulliver witnesses the many flaws and vices of the giant society, such as their obsession with wealth and material possessions, their shallow and superficial nature, and their tendency towards violence and aggression. He also observes the political intrigue and corruption present at the court, and he becomes disillusioned with the giant way of life. In the third part, Gulliver travels to Laputa, a flying island inhabited by scientists and intellectuals who are so preoccupied with their research and abstract thoughts that they are oblivious to the problems of the world around them. And in the fourth and final part, Gulliver travels to a land of horses called the Honinhums, where he is treated as an inferior being by the intelligent horses who rule the land. Gulliver eventually comes to see the horses as superior to humans and becomes disgusted by his own species. So you can see what I mean, that Gulliver's travels is a lot more than Lilliput. It was only when I started doing the research that I even became aware of these f four different worlds. Again, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing them right. They're very strange spellings, uh, Brobdignag and Honinhums. I think I did a little research how to uh, sort of half pronounce them. But it's a lot more than just Gulliver and Lilliput that Hollywood takes. It's a deep book. And uh, as we learned at the beginning, it's satirical in nature. And now what I want to share with you is just some of the themes and motifs um, that are contained within Gulliver's Travels, because, as I said, it's a deep book with a lot for us to learn about our own nature and human nature in general. So one of the main themes of the book is the inherent flaws and foibles of human nature, like I was saying. This is seen through Gulliver's encounters with the different various societies he visits, which all have their own peculiarities and flaws. Obviously, the Lilliputians have a different flaw to the Brob Big Nags, to the Laputas. Everyone has their own different flaws and fo foibles. As an example, like I'm saying, the Lilliputians are uh, petty and territorial, and the Brob Big Nagdeans, I think that's how you would pronounce it, forgive me, they're materialistic and shallow, and the Laputans are so immersed in their own intellectual pursuits that they're oblivious to the problems of the world around them. And then you have the Honinhums, again, I hope that's how you pronounce it, are rational and logical to the point of lacking emotion. And as we read towards the end, Gulliver, this is the final word that Gulliver travels to and he becomes disgusted by his own race because of their behaviours. But of course, 
we'll learn all that as we read through the book. Another theme is the corrupting influence of power and wealth. And this is evident in the Lilliputians, who are constantly at war over trivial matters, and in the broad big Nagdians, again, try my best here, who are obsessed with accumulating wealth and material possessions. So, again, even very early on, we learn about human nature and, uh, yeah, the, the, the virtues and vices. I'm sure there's two sides to Jonathan Swift's tale, and we can learn a lot about ourselves in the process. The motif of the outsider and the foreigner is also prominent in the book, of course. Gulliver is constantly travelling across all these places and how these different nations accept him, reflects their own inner world view and values. And um, yeah, Gulliver's an outsider and every society he visits, he must navigate the customs and expectations of these strange cultures. Yeah, trying not to get killed, I suppose. He's trying to survive uh, his adventure and his shipwreck. And this motive serves to the highlight the cultural differences and misunderstandings that can arise between different nations and groups of people. Um, we're seeing a lot in tribal culture nowadays. And so, yeah, I think it's important to not to make another individual the other, to other them and put them outside, um, outside of our group and have them as the anti. The motive of size is uh, also important because Gulliver, he's either a giant in Lilliput or a tiny person in each of the societies he visits. And this serves to emphasise the relation of nature and size and how it can influence one's perspective and position in society. And I think this also comes down to um, maybe the aspect of class and uh, stature within society. And um, we can learn a lot about this also. Finally, there's the motive of the noble savage, which appears in the fourth part of the book, as Gulliver comes to see the Honohums as superior to humans uh, due to their rationality and lack of negative traits such as greed, envy and aggression. And we learn a lot, yeah, sort of about the negativity of the human race through these intelligent horses, the Honinhooms, I think that's how you pronounce it. And this motive uh, will serve to criticise the decadence and corruption of European society of the 1700s and to suggest that a more primitive or natural way of life may be superior. And there's many books about this, how actually civilization and the modern world is actually, it's not a good thing for us. We, we may be better off going back and living as our archaic ancestors did. So there we go. Overall, Gulliver's Travels is a satirical commentary on the flaws and foibles of human nature as seen through Gulliver's experiences in these different societies and through the mouthpiece of um, Jonathan Swift is using Gulliver as a way for him to share his views of society and culture through Gulliver and so I cannot wait to begin reading this on Sunday at 8 p.m. Like I said, I was excited before when I thought, oh, it's just Gulliver visiting Lilliput. And uh, yeah, I had an opinion about the book. I thought that all it was was Lilliput, um, but it's clearly more to the novel than that. So I hope through this introduction, it's piqued your interest and you'll be able to join me on Sunday at 8 p.m. for the first reading, and then I'll try and read it early in the week so that we can then move on to The Hobbit by the following Sunday. So guys, I hope to see you at one of the live reads. Remember, you can always catch up if you miss the live. I will say if you are enjoying the content and are looking forward to Gulliver's Travels and The Hobbit, please consider uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel and maybe share the show on your socials if you think that other people might want to enjoy the reading and come along for the journey. And I hope to see you at one of the lives soon.